And Pinky is going. And I am going. Today, uh, with Mr. Vinny Caggiano, we're going to take a look at some, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, tricks, gimmicks, uh, bits, uh, perhaps even some hackneyed guitar phrasings. I don't know. Let's see. All right, and of course, uh, I haven't played the guitar for weeks, and I've been really rusty. I did a gig the other day, and I was uh, a little concerned. So this is a bad time to ask me for all the technique stuff. Thank you, Steve. Okay. All but, right. uh, it's good we got you drunk then. So, <laughs> those fingers fly. Uh, I'm going to, th this whole thing is going to be a, a little bit of a test for Vinny, which I'm sure he'll A little pass. bit ran, like random questioning. Right, like right. And when, th if there's something that requires a little more, hopefully short uh, explanation of how that chord came to be or whatever, we'll bring that up as well. So it's f kind of free-floating. Vinny has also got some ideas for what he was thinking about for this lesson today, which uh, he didn't know what I was up to, so we'll see. Um, first, I, I would be sort of uh, some basic, again, this is for like songwriter type people, this isn't for like virtuosos, but like bluegrass. All right, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, bluegrass relies on mostly the cowboy chords here. Okay. And actually, this also flows into what I was going to talk about. Oh, good. And, and also about, you were talking about uh, kind of cloudy, dreamy harmony. All this stuff kind of flows into one area. All right. So the thing about it is, though, okay, first of all, like say for bluegrass, the optimal key uh, for the more country sounding bluegrass is G. G, okay. And the more up, up, optimal key for blues uh, is E, blues sounding bluegrass. Okay. okay? And I'll give a demonstration. Remember, I don't know if you recall this, but a pentatonic scale has a major and minor root. Okay? Right. That, you know, I, I shouldn't go into, but you have an idea. No, actually, I sort of had that down on, uh, it, it is something I wanted to cover in the short form. Uh, just so that you, the thing you always brought up about that was you could be playing something in a major key and you could use the minor pentatonic uh, and that becomes much more expressive than if you were playing in a, major scale right okay let's see if i could really fix that up truncate all of this okay all right yeah, i know put it in a zip file okay all right i'm going to do a basic pentatonic scale that most guitar players first scale they ever learn all right the a minor pentatonic so i'm going and you could find this anywhere on the internet Now this, there are four other pentatonic shapes and two sliding uh, pentatonics. I won't go into those, right. but the principle is there. Right. All right. Now, the trick that you need to know with this particular shape and none of the other ones is that your first finger, think of it as, call, call it minor root, whether you understand what that means or not, call it minor root. Okay. And where the pinky is, call that major root. Okay. Okay. Now. What that means is, now you don't have to worry about the scale per se at this point. What you really have to worry about is your chord progression. You have to find out what is the chord that is, is home, that, that, that sits and relaxes and says, ah, I'm done. Okay. All right, so let's say I'm doing a progression. You can hear C is the one that wants to sit. Right. Now, it's, and it's C major, right? Mm -hmm. So I take my, my two fingers here, right? Okay. And let's say I don't know the placement of the scale yet, but I know where a C note is. I bring it so my pinky lands there. On a C? Now, that's called the major root. We have a C major chord, so I have C major root. All Got right. that? So when I play a C, you can hear it sounds a country sound. Okay. That's when... All right, that's when you're, you're using a major root. Okay. okay. So you have a chord progression, all right? Uh, you go through the progression. Whatever the ending chord is will determine what your root's going to be, whether it's major or minor and what the note is. Okay. So let's say I had something in E major. I go C, D, E. Now I do my pentatonic shape. Even though this note is not E, right. over here, this, is, this note is. It's the, what's called the major root. Okay. Right. So E major. Now, uh, let's say I had E minor, 
Well, actually, let's go back to A. a. All right, so C was our major root, right? Right? And an A minor pentatonic is now called a C major pentatonic, even though you're playing the exact same shape and notes in the same place. Okay. Does all right? Yeah. You change the name of it because of the root chord, okay? Okay. Now, what if our root chord is minor? <coughs> okay. Mm. So now, let's say I have a regression. And I rest on A minor. Okay. Right? Now, I take my same scale disc shape, right, the first two notes, and I find an A, but this time with the first finger. Right. All right? Now... All right. Okay. Note the root goes here. Now we go back to C. There's our ending chord. sit on A anymore. All right. Uh, so there are two roots to the pentatonic scale no matter which shape of the pentatonic right. you use. However, your job is to locate where is the minor and where is the major. Right. If I do like say another uh, pentatonic shape, all right, let's say this one. All right. I have to know what of those notes is doing the same thing as these two on the first shape. Okay. All right. So the way you do it is you go, well, it's A, C here. This is also an A minor pentatonic, so I, find, I have to find an A. There's my A, and there's my C. Or minor. Now the root is there. There we go. Does that make some sense? No, it does. Now that's absolutely necessary to address your question. Now. All right, so we have there. I call there are three what I call chord environments. We already covered two: the major chord environment where you come home to a C chord or, mm -hmm. or any major chord. Right. All right. Let's say it's D. Uh, okay. Well, this is my major finger. I move it up to the D note. Now I have D major pentatonic. Just follow the shape. Okay. All right. Now, what if I want a D minor pentatonic? Well, this is my minor finger. Here's the D note. I move it up here, and now I have D minor pentatonic. Oh. Okay. D major. D minor. Okay. Here's B. B minor, B major. But so you're playing the same pentatonic shape. Same pentatonic right. shape. Okay. All right. This is a, uh, for some reason, this is a really difficult uh, concept for people to grasp. I usually have to go for months with people. It's kind of like a Zen enlightenment moment that they get eventually. Well, I, I, I think the sort of the big value here down the road would be you, you, you can quickly ascertain root and key, I guess, whatever. And you'll know where you can go on the keyboard. I mean, you, you instantly can fly yeah, to Yeah, kind of have a computer in here. You right, know. that you can go on the keyboard to start where you can start to embellish, whatever. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. The, the pentatonic shape is just kind of like a general template to work off of, and then you could add color tones and whatever. But let me get back to my train of thought, yeah. and then we can move on to your questions, okay? Yeah. Now, the, there are three environments. Because why are there three environments? There are three types of chord, I always say. There are major chords, minor chords, and seventh chords. Right. Everything thereafter is kind of fluff, okay? Let's say A minor 11. That's just right. an A minor or chord. 13th, it's just yeah. got bells and whistles, okay? Yeah. So we have major, minor, and seventh environments. Those environments are determined by the ending chord. We just did major and we did minor, but we did not do seventh. Now here's the trick about seventh, and this is what really tweaks people's brains. If I have an A7, all right, I'm not going to use the major ton pentatonic, A major pentatonic, to get a blue sound, even though here's a major chord, right? Right. This is minor if my middle finger comes off, but right. when I make a seventh, the pinky comes off. So this major note is still here. What you do in the blues is you play the minor pentatonic against that major note or the seven chord. In other words, like A7, the rule is to get a blues sound, you use the minor pentatonic. Okay. Now, let's hear the three different ones again. Okay. All right, here's A minor. Now, I threw in accidentally a couple of other outside the scale notes. 
Now uh, let's uh, do C major, right? <laughs> the major ones are always they kind of tacky, but here we go. And there's my C note. Now A7. The blue sound. Yeah. Now the trick also is that it's against an A7 chord. I can use the major. All right. It'll really soften the scale of sound up. It's not so bad, but it won't give you the spice of blues. Right. A trick I teach my students, and this is something I learned way back in my Eric Clapton study days, is what I call the major minor switch. All right. Which is you have you play an A7, and I might go major first, right? Okay. Sound, right. Does this even flow back into classical music where, what was it, E. Power Biggs always made the comment, minor is richer than major. Absolutely. Jazz yeah. guys will tell you the same thing. Yeah. But this, the blues never flowed into classical until it, uh, it came to America and George Gershwin started to promote oh. blues inside music. The blues laws and rules didn't it took a long time for them to reach classical because the classical guys thought this is all primitive and what are these guys yeah. doing, you know? But uh, they caught on right quick. Yeah, okay.